What we're going to be looking at here is the settlement of debt by granting equity interest here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be paying off some debt through a transfer of common stock to the creditor. So let's look at our example here. Corporation A owes $400,000 plus $36,000 in accrued interest to Bank B. And that's in the form of a debt or a 10-year 10% note here. Now Corp A's business has deteriorated and they cannot pay the note or the loan here. And on 12-31-20, X1 Bank B agrees to accept Corp A's common stock here or an equity interest here in Corporation A here and, and they're going to cancel the entire debt here. So the, the stock includes 15,000 shares or $20 par stock here with a fair value of $360,000. So what's going on here is Corporation A cannot pay the debt here of $400,000 plus the accrued interest. and uh, that owes to Bank B here, but uh, Corporation A offers Bank B their own, our Corporation A's stock here. And it has a fair market value here of $360,000. And by issuing this stock here uh, to Bank B here, Corporation A is not going to be responsible for paying any of that debt. Uh, that uh, $400,000 note here plus the interest and corporation uh, or the bank B is just going to write it off here in exchange for the uh, fair value of the common stock they're we're going to receive here from corporation A. So let's go down and look at how we'd record this here and first we're going to look at it from corp A or the debtor's perspective here. This is where they transfer the stock here uh, to bank B here. And what's going to be going on here is we're going to have a carrying amount of the payable here over the fair value of the equity transferred is going to be a gain here on some debt restructuring here by Corporation A. Okay, so let's look at our entries here. So again, we're transferring equity here, common stock on 1231X1 by Corporation A the debtor here uh, to the bank B. So what Corporation A has here is they're going to have this liability, this notes payable here as a liability on their balance sheet here and they also have that interest payable here uh, on the uh, on interest on this notes payable that's accrued here. So we've got that here and they're going to be writing that off here and what they're going to do is they're going to have to set up uh, this equity, these equity accounts here, they're going to have to add to their common stock accounts because they're going to be issuing more common stock here to pay off that debt. And what they're going to have is they're going to have a gain here to this debt restructuring on our income statement. They're going to recognize a gain here. So let's just go through these accounts one by one here. So first for our notes payable, they would have had that credited here uh, when it was issued for $400,000 and now they're going to write it off here. Uh, they're not going to be responsible to pay it back here. So so they're just going to write it off. Uh, debit it here for 400000 Same with the interest payable. They had a credit amount here of $36,000 that was due. Now they're just going to debit it off and uh, debit it here and write it off here. So they're not going to, uh, they're going to have paid for their, uh, paid their notes payable here by issuing this common stock. So let's look at our equity. And this, this common stock here is an equity account here on our balance sheet. So first off for the common stock here. Well, we would have credited here for $300,000. That's simply the $20 par value times the 15,000 shares that are being issued here to Bank B. That's equal to $300,000. So they credit their common stock here for $300,000. And then we've got this additional paid in capital to deal with on the stock that was issued here. Now, remember the fair market value of the common stock here on 1231X1 is $360,000. It's a tradable security here. That the, that's traded on an open market, and there is a uh, measurable fair market value here on that on the date that they're going to be writing. I'm going to be exchanging the stock for the uh, note that their uh, notes payable that they're due here from the for, that they're paying back to the bank here. Okay, so let's look at how we'd calculate this additional paid in capital, the credit amount here. So we would take the fair value of the stock here, that was $360,000, and compare it to the par value here. That was that 15,000 shares times $20 par amount, which was equal to $300,000 here. So the fair value less the par value here is going to equal our additional paid in capital and that is $60,000. Simply the difference between the fair value of the stock 
when it was traded or exchanged here to the bank B for the debt here and the par value of the stock. So we've accounted for our common issuing our common stock and it'll be done in a regular or usual manner here. $300,000 credit uh, to common stock for the par value and the difference here between the fair value of the stock here and its par value goes to an additional paid in capital here of $60,000. So now we have to deal with this gain here on our income statement. And again, an ordinary gain. How do we calculate that? It's going to, we're going to credit it for $76,000 and we calculate it in this fashion. So the, we look at the carrying value of the debt owed, that was the $400,000 notes payable here, plus the accrued interest here of $36,000. So we can calculate the carrying value of the debt owed here at $436,000. Now we compare that to the fair market value of the common stock that was exchanged here and that was $360,000. And that was at the, um, the date here of 1231X1 here. So difference between the carrying value of the debt owed here $436,000 and the fair market value of the common stock at the date that it was exchanged here at 360,000 gives us uh, a gain here, a gain on the debt restructuring here of $76,000 because we gave up less here, only $360,000 worth of, that's what we gave up here and we owed, or Corp A owed here more, $436,000. So they owed more than what they gave up here so we got a gain on our debt restructuring of $76,000. So that goes up to our income statement here, credit that for $76,000. So all your debits and credits are gonna balance here after we recognize this gain here on this debt restructuring. Okay, so now we've taken care of uh, our debtor, Corporation A here. Let's go and look at how we, how the creditor would be recording this uh, uh, loan here, or the write-off of this loan here. So again, here we're gonna be transferring equity uh, to Bank B, the creditor here from Corporation A. And two things are going to happen here. There's going to be a non-cash asset or common stock received at its fair value here. And there's also going to be a, a charge or excess, a charge against the excess loss against an allowance here for a doubtful account as a reduction of a receivable here. So we got two things that we're going to be dealing with here from uh, the creditor's perspective here of Bank B. So okay, let's go look at what we've would do here. So we got, again, the transfer of this common stock on 1231X1 here to Bank B, the creditor. So this is what Bank B would have. So they've got their asset, two asset accounts here. They've got the, well, they got the asset for the investment on these stock that they're going to receive here. Plus they're going to have the assets here on their notes receivable, interest receivable, and then they're going to have an allowance for a doubtful account, which is a contra revenue account. They're going to have to add that set up here. Okay, so let's First, look at the um, investment here, as a, and they're they're going to be called trading securities here because these are let's just say these stocks are traded on an open market somewhere here, corporation A stock that they're going to receive here. So what they're going to do here uh, as an investment here, as an asset on the balance sheet here, they're going to have and record it here as trading securities. In this case, we would debit that here for three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So we invest in increase our investment account here uh, to based on the common stocks fair market value here at the data transfer here, $360,000 on 1231X1. And then what um, the bank here is gonna be writing off or giving up here for the common stock they received here is gonna be this notes receivable a loan here to Corporation B again on the balance sheet here. So the, the loan was for, the note here was for $400,000, debit amount here for $400,000. So they would be crediting hit or removing off, off the books here for $400,000. And then they have the interest receivable here, again on this note to Corporation A here, that would have been debited for $36,000 here. And then they'd be writing it off here for crediting the interest receivable here uh, for writing it off here at $36,000. Okay, so we've taken care of our notes receivable here, written it off the books, but now this is what we have to have set up here, this allowance for a doubtful accounts here, and that's a contra revenue account. That works in the opposite here, reduces any receivable here. 
All right, so let's look at how we'd calculate this allowance here. So we received $360,000 here. That was the fair market value of that common stock that we received in exchange for their writing off this note or for giving this notes receivable here um, uh, from uh, Corporation A here. So the note, what they gave up here was the notes receivable of $400,000 plus the interest that was um, I, accrued on that note here of $36,000. So the net amount here is going to give, give us an allowance here of $76,000. So let's just look at that. An allowance account here, we would have credited that here, let's just say uh, for $76,000. That was based on the fact that uh, we weren't going to, uh, Bank B realized they weren't going to get the uh, note or the note turned bad on them here from Corporation A, so they would have credited or set up this allowance for doubtful accounts. Again, as a contra account here, the note's receivable. And then at the time that they're writing off the note here on the exchange for the uh, common stock, they would debit it here for $76,000. So, okay, they've taken care of their allowance account here, and that's uh, debit. Uh, the debt here of notes receivable, the write-off of, and this is the loss that they're uh, recording here in this notes receivable. They didn't take any loss on the income statement or anything like that. They just took it as a contra receivable here against the notes receivable. Okay, all right. So that takes care of recording both here our uh, Corporation A, our debtor here, and also Bank B, the creditor here, on how you would. Uh, Write off some bad, uh, writing off some bad debt here uh, by uh, the bank B here in exchange for uh, some granting some equity investment. In in this case, it was in corporation corporation A here. Uh, now remember, this was we wrote it as a trading security here, as because it was tradable here, and we would have increased our investment account here. But had it not been a trading security here, then we would have had an investment account here in Corporation A here as some stock here, but we're just showing it here as an investment. Okay, so just remember here when you're uh, working with this settlement and debt and granting X equity here, you're going to have to look at it from Corporation A to debtor's perspective here where you may have some gain on some debt restructuring and then from the creditor's perspective here, the bank here, then you would instead of recognizing and gain an income statement, they generally set up this allowance or contra receivable account here for any of the bad debts here. And then the, anything that they receive for writing off this bad debt here, they set up here as a um, non-cash asset or a receivable here at its fair market value. Okay, so that takes care of our uh, settlement of debt by granting equity interest.